Yesterday, Yaraji explained that by noting the primary object rising and falling of the abdomen, as well as other objects, there will be vidya, effort, sati, mindfulness, and samadhi, concentration. Noting the object with effort, the mind will be sustained on the object. There will be sustained mindfulness. And the mind falls calm collected on the object and samadhi concentration also arises. In this way, samadhi khanda concentration group is cultivated. And by cultivating samadhi khanda concentration group every single second, one is fulfilling samadhi sasana concentration teaching and there will be sasana sambadhi accomplishment of sasana accomplishment of teaching there is also sila sasana morality teaching by fulfilling morality having sila morality the person's physical behavior Verbal behavior will be blameless, pure, clean, gentle, and lovable. By having Samadhi Sasana concentration training, the mind is blameless, pure, clean, and gentle. When the mind is pure, clean, gentle, Due to the fulfillment of Samadhi Sikha, concentration training, then it is said that one is adding more beauty on the natural beauty. When the mind is pure, clean, cultured and gentle, one will not wish to transgress, not even in the mind. There will not be wish to kill, to steal, or to take other people's belonging by force. One will not be wanting the sensual pleasure or sensual objects. The mind is free from Dhyabhada, ill will, aversion, grudge. These unwholesomeness, these unwholesome thoughts does not arise the moment one is developing Samadhi Sikha concentration training. When the person has Tina sloth, the person does not want to assert effort. Having made that topper one feels exhausted, wanting to take easy in the practice. But having via effort, one overwhelms laziness. And applying vidaka, aiming, directing the noting mind onto the object, the mind is fresh. Having vidaka, aiming, directing the noting mind onto the object, and effort in noting the object, whenever these two factors are fulfilled, tina mita, slot and topper, will not arise. One feels joy and happiness in the practice, Yabada, ill will, cannot arise, and one feels satisfied with the taste of the Dhamma. Having happiness, the mind is free from odaja, restlessness, 
and Gokota, worry, restlessness and worry cannot arise. When there is Odata, there is restlessness, the mind is not on the object, the mind is distant away from the object, and when Gokata, worry arises, one regrets and have remorse on wrongdoing and the also having remorse on not doing wholesome deeds when the person has chance. So in this way there will be remorse and regret. Having the happiness in the practice, the mind is free from odasa and gokosa, restlessness and worry or regret. When the noday mind rubs and strokes against the object, there will not be uncertainty, there will not be confusion or doubt. In this way, Vijikicca, skeptical doubt, is also removed when the node mind is rubbing, stroking against the object. When these jhanic factors are present, there will be energy, there will be tama, in other words, sati, there will be energy power, the mind become energetic, powerful, having these mental strength. The nivrana hindrances hinder the wholesome mind from arising. They are also called jedeso upakilesa, as these hindrances pollute the mind. Having jhanic factors, the mind is free from these hindrances that pollute the mind, and knowledge arises. Having hindrances, the hindrances hinder that knowledge cannot arise at all, and they are called panyaya dobali karana as these hindrances can weaken the mind. When knowledge arises through the practice, these hindrances do not have chance to arise. So one can know how each of the noting is very precious and valuable. If one is cultivating the jhanic factors every single second, initiating the jhanic factors every single second, there will be opadana, initiating vatana, increasing, cultivating again and again, repeatedly, so that the mind becomes from small to big, from tender to ripe, from less to many, and it is called bhavana. Practicing accurately, precisely, one will understand the meaning of bhavana through his or her practice. When the bhavana becomes strengthened, the person See the rising falling, discerning them clearly. At times when the person at times when the person's effort is lack or when aiming is not enough, then sati mindfulness become weak. And at times when effort is lack then it happens that the mind wanders, thinking about other things. 
if there is wandering mind, yogi comes to know it as wandering. But noting the object with aim and effort, mindfulness develops, concentration develops, and yogi also understands that mindfulness and concentration has developed. If there is no aiming, no effort in noting the object, the mind wanders here and there. It is important to know the wandering as soon as the wandering mind arises. And when there are pains and aches that arises, in the body, one should also note the pain and also aches when they arise. So one should be noting every object, the primary object as well as other object that arises. When the mind is strengthened, when the mindfulness and concentration become strengthened, one will be able to note all the objects that arises. When noting the object continuously for one minute, two minutes, and so on, the mental strength arises. Sadabala the power of faith and confidence also is developed. When the mind is free from nirvana hindrances, the mind is serene. There will be the power of serene faith. And through the practice, one discerns nama rupa distinctly, at the stage of Udiya Bhyanyana, knowledge into fast arising and passing away of objects, the faith and confidence become amazingly strong. Nobody else have to encourage him or her, but when the person reaches Udiya Bhyanyana, his or her faith and confidence become amazingly strong. Through the practice, when the person sees the benefit of the practice, his or her faith and confidence become stronger and stronger, and the person builds up more courage in the practice. In the beginning of the practice, Yogi has to make the effort to note the object aiming the mind onto the object so that mindfulness will be sustained. But in the beginning of the practice, courage has not arisen much. But through the practice, when the yogi overcomes difficulties or overcome pains and ache, yogi's courage becomes Strong. So in the beginning of the practice, one has to nurture so that courage will arise. But as the yogi has overcome difficulties or has overcome pains and ache, the person's faith and confidence become amazingly strong. His or her courage becomes amazingly strong. And the person will not be afraid to be tired or to get exhausted. The person will not be afraid to catch illness. But when yogi overcomes vedana, pains and aches, the yogi becomes courageous, not fearing of illness or anything. The person is willing to make sacrifices 
the person practices without regard to one's body and life. When knowledge arises, courage becomes stronger and stronger. Sati mindfulness becomes strong. Samadhi mindfulness becomes strong, and there will be panya bala, power of knowledge, discerning distinctly between nama rupa, cause and effect, and the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. Discerning the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, yogi develops vipassana knowledge, and yogi discern distinctly on the uh, yogi discern correctly, completely, outstandingly, and there will be sampajanya. And also, hiri, moral shame, and otapa, moral fear, becomes strong. Noting the object with aim and effort, the nivrana hindrances are removed. And when hiri, moral shame, is present, the person is shameful from losing to note the object. The person is shameful that the defilements will enter the mind. The person becomes shameful that the defilements will ruin his or her practice. So the person practices even more diligently. Day by day, the mental strength will become stronger and stronger. Knowledge arises. Day by day, the mental strength become amazingly stronger and stronger, and nivrana hindrances will be defeated. One overwhelms the hindrances, one gains the upper hand on the defilement. In the beginning, the person is noting the object so as to defend himself, herself, from the attack of the defilement. But when the practice is becoming stronger, yogi is attacking the defilement so that the defilement become defeated. And also, there will be joy, happiness arising in the practice. Such kind of joy and happiness arise through the practice, not from imagination or thinking, but one gains joy, happiness through the practice by noting the object effectively, efficiently, respectfully. Noting the object continuously without stopping, Without any gaps in between, noting meticulously, thoroughly, the mental strength becomes stronger and stronger. So one has to note the object continuously without any gaps in between. Saraji gives the example of the car engine. When the car's engine is turned on, it charges the batteries so that the car will run. But if the person does not turn on the engine of the car, gradually the battery will get run down and it takes quite a long time to start the engine. In the same way, Jogi has to be noting the object continuously so that the mental energy will be charged. But if the yogi is practicing in a stop and go manner, the battery will run down. So yogi should not be practicing in stop and go manner. If the
person is practicing in formal sitting and walking, but not mindful of the daily activities, the battery will get run down in the practice. So the meditation teachers have been encouraging the yogi to keep on noting every arising object, not to miss. Not to fail to note the general activities, daily activities, even the minute daily activities, are note should be noted. Even the minute daily activities should be noted. Also, when standing up from sitting down, yogis should note thoroughly, meticulously. The intention to stand, as well as the standing, should be done mindfully. And also, yogis should be mindful in every lifting, moving, placing. Every object has to be noted respectfully, meticulously, thoroughly. And the teachers have been encouraging the yogis not to miss, not to fail to note. Any of the daily activities or any of the objects, noting the object continuously without a gap, without missing, without failing, the battery will get charged in the practice. Just as the battery will be charged when the engine is on in the car, so that the car can run. As well as the headlights will be on when the battery is fully charged. When a person has to work in order to earn for oneself or family, if the person has to keep on working without a break, then the person get fed up with work. And if the person has to continue working without a break, then there can be tension, stress, depression, and the person get discouraged and depressed with work. But in the Dharma practice, the more the yogi practices systematically, continuously. In an effective, efficient way, the mental strength become amazingly strong. That the yogi does not get fed up or bored with the practice. When yogi practices continuously without taking break in the practice. By practicing systematically, the person's mind, yogi's mind, become more and more energized. Tension, stress, depression will not arise in the practice. So the Dharma practice can give guarantee that the kind of problems, tension, stress, depression, will not arise by. Practicing continuously, meticulously, thoroughly, according to the guidance and instruction. So the Dharma practice is very special. That's why Saraji and the teachers have been encouraging the yogis to practice diligently, so that they will gain benefit of the practice, and it will be worthy of. Coming all the way, and their time in the center will be worthwhile. That's why the teachers, Saraji and the teachers, have been encouraging the yogis to practice continuously without resting or without stopping. So yogis should practice precisely 
according to the guidance and instruction so that their practice will be effective and efficient. And Saraji encourages the yogi to have faith and confidence in the practice. One should be mindful of the object in the way the object is. By noting the object, there will be Buddha and Buddha to Pasati. One will discern the object in the way the object is. One should observe the object in the way it really is so that one will come to discern correctly. When the noting mind is concurrent with the object, again and again, repeatedly, the mental strength will be becoming stronger and stronger. Noting the object with aim and effort, sati mindfulness develops, samadhi concentration develops, the person's noting becomes effective and efficient. And yogi comes to discern sabhava, the nature, the characteristic of the object. Sabhava is the unique individual characteristic of the nama rupa and the common characteristic of the nama rupa. But in the beginning of the practice, the nature the characteristic is not known yet. When eating the food, when the person eats without paying attention, the person will not know the flavor. One has to chew properly, pay attention, in order to know the flavor or the taste of the food. In the same way, when noting the object, one should note attentively with aim and effort so that one will discern the nature, the characteristic of the object, such as one can know the flavor by eating, paying attention while chewing. It is called sarasa. Each and every Nama Rupa has its own unique individual characteristic and also they are common characteristic of the Nama Rupa. In each and every Nama Rupa there is the characteristic which is compared to the taste of the food. There is the characteristic such as hardness, softness, roughness, moisture, cohesion, congealing, warmth, heat, cold, stiffness, tension, movement, cognizing, coming into contact. Such are the characteristics of the Nama and Rupa. Just as food has its own flavor and taste, in the same way, each and every Nama Rupa has its own unique individual characteristics. By being mindful of the object at the moment the object arises, when the mind becomes strengthened, one discerns the unique individual characteristic of the object. Just as when one eats food, chewing properly, paying attention, one knows the flavor of the food. In the same way, by noting the object with aim and effort, when the noting mind is concurrent with the object, the person discerns the unique individual characteristic every time one notes the object. So it is important that when noting the object, one should have all the factors of mental strength. 
in the noting of the object. So it is the duty of yogi to note the object with aim and effort so that mindfulness will be sustained. Noting the object with aim and effort, the mental strength, sati and samadhi, effort, mindfulness will become stronger and stronger and yogi will discern moment by moment, noting after noting. Sabhava is the characteristic and it is also called sarasa. Each and every nama rupa has its own unique individual characteristic, just as food has its own flavor and taste. By noting the object, when one discerns sabhava, the characteristic of the object, the person understands through his or her practice. When one chooses the food paying attention, one comes to know the flavor of the food. In the same way, by noting rising of the abdomen with aim and effort, yogi comes to know the characteristics such as stiffness, tension, movement. When coming for interview, Yogi should describe his or her work. Whether Yogi can note the object when it arises with aim and effort, whether the noting mind is concurrent. So this describes the work of the Yogi. And also Yogi should know whether he or she can note the object effectively, efficiently, meticulously, precisely. This explains the quality of his or her practice. So when Yogi knows his or her work as well as the quality of his or her practice, then what? The yogi come to know. When eating the food, what flavor the person comes to know. But if the person is talking and eating at the same time, the person does not know the flavor or the taste. One chews the food, swallow it without knowing the taste. If the yogi does not note with aim and effort, not paying attention in the practice, he or she will not know the characteristics. If the yogi is noting the object with aim and effort, when the mind is concurrent with the object, when the noting is thorough, meticulous and precise, what the yogi come to know? So one should also report what he or she come to know by noting the object. So it should be described in the report when going for interview. And Saraji will continue to explain how Yogi should discuss their experience to the meditation teacher. And Saraji will continue to explain tomorrow. <laughs>